We therefore need to defy the urge to give up. We need to make sure that we finish what we start. Jesus modeled this. In John 9, 19, 4, he says, I have brought your glory on earth by completing the work that you gave me. Now, Jesus knew why he came. Watch this, Pastor Lord. It's kind of amazing that for the three and a half years of ministry where Jesus did everything right, it was on the eve of his crucifixion that he was tempted to give up on his mission. When he went to the Garden of Gethsemane, just, on the, just a few, few hours before his crucifixion, there in the Garden of Gethsemane, he got to a point where he couldn't follow through. He couldn't go on with his mission. And he even prayed a prayer and said, Oh, Father, if it was possible, I would ask you to let this cup pass from my mouth. But then he stops. He says, but nevertheless. Oh, not as I will, but as you will. In other words, nevertheless, I'm going to push through pain and all. Nevertheless, I'm going to push on even if I don't feel like you are with me. Nevertheless, I'm going to push on even if I don't understand. There are days when you need to push on even if you don't feel like it. Can I hear an amen in this house? There are days when you need to stand up and do what's right even if you don't feel like it. Even if people forsake you. Even if people don't believe in you. Even if all your friends walk away from you. Even if your family turns their back on you. Even if your emotions tell you you're not going to do it. You've got to stand up and say, nevertheless, I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on. Because finishing and being a finisher needs a certain kind of commitment. Jesus, nevertheless, I'm going to finish. Look at Paul. Paul says, I know I'm going over there. I'm going to Jerusalem. I know that there are tribulations that await me, but I'm still going there anyhow. <laughs> He's defying the urge to finish. Look at Matthew chapter 15 about the Canaanite woman. I love this story. It's an amazing story. This Canaanite woman, remember, she's not an Israelite. She's not a Hebrew. And therefore, under this time, this dispensation of the ministry of Jesus, Jesus came to minister, as he said, to the lost sheep of Israel, only to the Hebrew people, to the Jews at that time, exclusively. He didn't come to minister to those who were not Jewish. But this woman who's Canaanite still comes to Jesus for help. Let's read this story. It's an amazing story. Let's have it up on the screen. Matthew 15 from verse 21, the New King James Version. Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. Verse 22. It says, And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. She needs help. Note verse 23. But Jesus didn't answer her. But he answered her not a word. Jesus didn't say anything. Yeah. Jesus didn't say anything. Didn't respond to the email. Didn't respond to the WhatsApp. <laughs> didn't respond to no, nothing. Just kept quiet. And you know, when I was reading this, thinking about it, I learned something, and I'm going to tell you in a short while. Not only did Jesus not answer her, the next thing he says, and the disciples urged Jesus, saying, Send her away. Hey! That's a second blow. Number one, Jesus doesn't answer. Number two, the people who are with Christ are saying, send her away. And then know the next verse. And Jesus answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Which is true. And then she came and worshipped him. You know, if it was us these days, we would never... Oh, someone doesn't answer you. Not me. Never. Not me. Never. You know, we are a generation that gets so easily offended. I've learned, Barcelona, through life. I'm not saying people should mistreat us. I'm not saying we should allow people to mistreat us. But there are times when you don't need to get so easily offended. Sometimes we wear our feelings on our sleeves. 
and it drives us away from our destiny. Yeah, yeah. This woman instead, she comes and worships. Jesus, first of all, didn't answer her. Secondly, the disciples say, tell him to send her away. Then she comes and worships him. Watch this. This is interesting. This is interesting. Now, after she worships, look what Jesus says. Jesus answered her and said, it's not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. How about two? This is getting worse. Number one, she's not answered. Number two, she's told to go away. Number three, she's called a dog. Imagine if it was us. We would have gone to the Human Rights Commission. Never. <laughs> They're not going to call me a dog. Now, I'm not saying we should allow ourselves to be abused. Please, don't misunderstand me. But I'm saying, one of the things I've learned is that as I've, as I've gone through different things in my life, I've noted that there are times when I sat in sessions where I was very offended at the preacher. Very offended because it sounded like this guy was talking about me. And sometimes he stood there and looked at me. <laughs> but after I left, if I was to be true to myself, I think God was using the brother to talk to me. And as I read the Bible, I noticed if you really look at the way Jesus interacted with his disciples, they had lots of opportunities to be offended. And I've realized that God doesn't try to be politically correct. Okay, I thank you for the amens. I scattered thunder showers of them. But some of you lost your job because you just a small and you're nothing. You just lost your cool. They didn't do much. It wasn't much. Listen, person. If someone says that you're a dog, I'm not saying you are. I'm saying if. I don't want to get sued here. If someone says you are a dog, I mean injure. Oof, oof. <laughs> if someone says I'm a dog, for instance. Okay. All right. Let me ask you a question. What effect does it have on who I am? No, 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 no. Let's talk now. Don't, don't give me that look. Don't give me that look. What effect does it have? I mean, how, how does it change who I am? I mean, how, how does it affect? Huh? I mean, he's, he's not saying no. He's not saying dog, dog like we are here. Yeah, no, no. He's not that kind of dog. No, no, no. It's not like, he, hey, dog, you know, we hear me and you, dog. No, it's not that kind of dog. It's the woof, woof kind of dog. It says dog. And you'll find out in life there are people who may not call you dog, but they may treat you like one. And you allow yourself to be taken away from your destiny, from your mission, because somebody thinks you're a dog. Let me ask you a question. If they think you're a dog, how does it change you? This woman is called a dog. Note what she does. Hey, I, I like the way you're quiet. I, I, she, I can feel a pill dropping. can hear one dropping. Verse 27. She said, yes, Lord. Now, my man said, I'm a dog. Now, now remember, in this culture, it's, it's not a swear word. But it's like, you are not an Israelite when they say dog. So yes, Lord, I'm, I'm a dog, in short. But, but even the little dogs <laughs> eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Oh, come on, give this lady a hand. I love her. I just love her. She, she is determined. She is determined to get what she came for. Verse 28. And Jesus answered and said, Oh, woman! Great it is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Somebody give the Lord a shout. Oh. So in order to be a finisher, you must make up your mind that no matter what obstacles are in your way, you are determined to finish. 